There's an old saying, when ships were made of wood, men were made of steel. Come on, boys! Come on! In 1789, the crew of a British Navy ship rose up and overthrew their captain, William Bly, in the infamous mutiny on the bounty. Bly and a few loyal men were bundled into a tiny boat and abandoned in the middle of the Pacific. They should have died. Instead, they managed to sail 4,000 miles to safety. Through some of the most unforgiving seas on Earth. Big waves, big, big waves. It remains one of the greatest survival feats of all time. Now, nine men are following the same route, in an identical boat, facing the same conditions, to measure themselves against history. Can the modern day man endure such hardships? Oh! Come on, lads, bail! There's nothing normal about being here. Nothing. <laughs> yeah! Be careful, be careful, be careful. We make it through, I think it's a huge triumph. Oh my god! It's a shark! We return victors! If we make one mistake, no, 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 no. Oh! it's utter, utter disaster. So far, injury. I'm absolutely gutted, mate, that you're going. And in fighting. Chris, Chris, shut, shut up for two seconds, Chris. ...have reduced the Bounty's End crew from nine to seven. I just want to get off right this second. Chris has left. Now we all stay united and we all finish this in brothers in arms. Get him. After six weeks at sea, they've made it 2,800 miles to Albany Island. Now, they are about to embark on the final leg of their 4,000-mile voyage. Pull the boat in before you pull the anchor out. It's pretty heavy. You're right. Yeah, yeah. We've made it for everything else. We are heading home to our families and loved ones. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. Homeward bound. This is it. The next time we hit land, we'll be free men. Right, guys, is everyone on board? I'm as young for it. But the crew aren't safe yet. For 43 days, they've been surviving on the same meagre rations as Bly. In terms of water, we've got one, two, three, four on the bow. They are now very weak. We've got a bunch of guys here who think that they're kind of out of the woods. They think we're just sailing home 10 days across the sea. We're about to embark upon 1,200 miles of open ocean with a bunch of emaciated guys with no proper hydration or nutrition. Now, if that's not something that's dangerous, I don't know what it is. In 1789, Captain Bly needed to rally his exhausted crew. Their only hope of survival was to make it to the nearest safe port, a Dutch trading post on the island of Timor. I now gave everyone hope that eight or ten days might bring us to a land of safety. Our fortitude and spirit remained everyone being encouraged by the hopes of a speedy termination to his misery. Back then, those guys shouldn't have survived, but they did. Right, guys, just listen in. It comes down to, to leadership. We've got it in our heads that we're going home. Let's get that out of our heads. We're not going home. We're just going to the next leg, which is Timor. Let's get through this together. Let's get there as a fucking brotherhood. We are men just like they were, and I can 
lead the men to the end of this voyage. Let's prove to everyone that this can be done all these years later. Are we going to go for it on this leg? Yes. Every available opportunity. Ah, look at him, he's a racer. <laughs> Fast as we can. Fast as we can. We're going to power home. Yacht racer Conrad wants to beat Bly's sailing time of 10 days. This is amazing! <laughs> this is probably the calmest sea state we've had pretty much the whole of the journey. Three days in, they are still flying. If it stays like this, it's the perfect finish. I think we deserve a little bit of luck. After five days, they've reached the Arafura Sea and are almost halfway to Timor. Whoa, look at the size of them! Guys, you're putting on a show for us. This is unfucking real. Oh, I'm getting sprayed by. I'm getting sprayed by the. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my god! There's not much I haven't seen, but this. Wow. I want to raise our bill on to this brotherhood because. No one will ever experience what we've gone through together. And I just want to say thanks, lads. It's been absolutely incredible. To the built on brotherhood. To the brotherhood. To the built on brotherhood. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It'll be this way until the end now. We should be able to push home strong and enjoy these last few days properly. <laughs> Halfway to the finish line, and about 7:30 this morning, we just stalled in the water. Um, the speed just reduced to nothing, so we are just bobbing around in the big blue sea at the moment. Guys. Basically, we're going to be not be doing much for the next 24 hours, OK? We're going to see how today goes and how tonight goes, and we will take it from there, OK? So today, have a chat, eat some coconuts, eat some biscuits, do what you've got to do, but just chill. That's all I want you to do, and we'll get there. We're fucking almost there anyway. All right? Everyone happy? Yeah, right, that's right. The crew only have enough water to last a week. If they're stuck in the doldrums for much longer, they'll be forced to cut their intake and risk dehydration. This really is up there with the toughest conditions we've endured. It's, it's unbearable. The heat is unbearable. There's like bodies strewn around the boat in kind of almost like slightly contorted positions. And I don't really want to see what the next stage is after this because this one's pretty horrible. At this stage of Captain Bly's journey, conditions couldn't have been more different. Sunday, June the 7th. Fresh gales and squally. 
with much wind at south-southeast and east-southeast. The sea was high and breaking over us. We were constantly wet and bailing. But I saw every prospect of a quick passage. It's quite interesting how different it is, isn't it? They're making like quick, quick passage, they're wet. The complete opposite to what, we're, uh, what I wouldn't give for a bit of rain right now. Mm. And a quick passage. And a quick, yeah, yeah that's the thing. And a quick passage. They're cruising. We are not. Mm. We're trapped. Fly, if you're watching, we do respect you. And uh, the conditions that you had were tough. All that rain, bailing, freezing cold, but give this a go. Sitting here becalmed, not going anywhere, not doing anything in 50 degrees of heat. Without wind, the journey could take weeks, and they will run out of water. Conrad, the crew's ocean racer, is becoming frustrated at their lack of progress. I prefer to be a bit more proactive <laughs> than just to sit and wait for something to happen. The thing is, is that we can't manifest wind. No. It's not within our power. It's so stressful, isn't it? But here's the thought. So could we... Could we row for, let's say, five hours a day? And you may not think that's very much, but, you know, that might be 10 miles a day, which, you know, even if it got us 50 miles further down the course, it might all make a difference. You yeah, know, no-one's ever been successful by sitting on their ass. And that may be the difference between a survivalist and a sailor. Conrad's plan to row goes directly against Ant's orders to conserve energy. Dangerous. Probably one. Conrad's attitude is that, you know, but it might get us to that bit of wind which then takes us to the end. Oh, well, it might take you away from the wind. Exactly. That's what, exactly. That's what I was thinking. No one knows. No one knows what's happening. We just need to wait for the wind to come. If it doesn't come, it doesn't come. This is over. End of story. Just when you thought you couldn't get any stiller or any slower, this happens. I've never, ever seen a sea this still in my life. The reflections in the water are almost like it's mirror, it's mirror like. There's only enough water for six more days. The game plan hasn't changed, guys. So let's just sit around another another couple of days. Guys, I know it sucks, but something has to change. Everyone happy? Yes. Yeah. When I was sleeping last night, or not sleeping, I could hear Conrad um, having a conversation um, with the crew that are on watch, saying that we're not doing enough. If we start mowing, we're going to find ourselves in a whole world of pain. The energy that you use is just not worth the reward, and I won't put them in for it. If the crew start rowing, they risk exhaustion and dehydration do nothing, and they risk running out of water. 
Ant and his quartermaster, Reesh, decide to take action. As of midnight, we'll be on 51 litres remaining. So the decision that Ant and myself have come up with is that uh, we'll be going down to five ladles. That's two and a half cups, guys, each day, and we could potentially go down lower, so just prepare yourselves for that. We're having a litre of water a day, and I don't think that's enough to properly stay hydrated in this sort of heat with a sweat. So I'm quite worried about dehydration. I feel thirsty all the time, and I've only peed once today, and it was very dark. Can you see anything on the horizon that's going to make my day in the way of wind, do you think, Conrad? Uh, no obvious signs, let's put it that way. I'll tell you what, it would be good tonight. Perfect for rowing. Absolutely perfect. I'll we'll probably do 30 miles. Yeah, but I don't. I honestly know why we're wasting time. Why don't you call Ant over and discuss it? Because he's made up his mind. After two days with no wind, support for Conrad's plan is starting to grow. So what's interesting is that basically what he's, his argument is that ultimately he feels like there's certain areas in the world where you can get stuck in a tiny little place and if you don't actually put the effort in to get out of that tiny little place you'll never hit the first bit of wind to be able to get you to the next bit of wind. That's racing. It's uh, just, well, it's a racing world, it's a survival world. Oh. OK, OK, so that's an interesting perspective stab. Maybe yeah. what's the bit of well, no, he just... What, what he yeah, I'll put it to a bug at all decks on hand. I'll put it to a boat now. Well, we'll stand down. Let's get going. Let's go for it. That's it, right, Yeah, sir. guys, can we get all hands to deck, please? OK. All hands to deck, please. Now, right, guys, um, you all know my, my trailer fort is I want to see this out. We're in a survival situation. Comrade, we'd rather see us being proactive right now. We know what you want to do, but you've made it perfectly clear well, no, no. on what you want to do. You want to row from cloud to cloud or do whatever. Can, but, uh, can that's I just say a couple of things? Yeah, of course you I can. Mean, of course you can. You know, I think uh, it's unfair to single me out. I'm not, sing mate, I'm not singling you out here. It's been going for the last couple of days, mate. When my leadership's coming into question, I have to get on top of it, mate. I have to try and let I, people I, know, and then I have to do something about it. Well, I don't know what Dan you know, came and said to you, you know, whether... OK, I went over to him and I told him exactly what you said to me. I didn't, I'm, this is not no. stirring the pot. No, he wasn't. I was not stirring the pot. No. I just said exactly, I said, listen, there's a, there's a perspective that you have on sailing. And sailing, on, there's on no question. There's no question, Comrade was saying, but this is survival. This is, it. and we are on the bones of our ass at the ultimate survival situation, where this is getting to the point now where it's becoming dangerous. I just want to put it to a vote right now. And here's the vote. If you think Comrade's decision is correct and he should step up as captain, put your hand up, please. I'm going to put my hand down. If you respect my decision and you think I should continue doing my job and listening to what I say, can you put your hands up, please? Everyone's going to do that. Right, guys, I just wanted to make sure that, I, firstly, I was captain, that I wasn't fucking dreaming it. My decision is final. I know, and, you, I know, and I respect that, and that's the... It's not, we're well, not in I, a racing world, mate, and I just need you to listen to what I've got to say, trust in what I'm doing, and I will get you to the end of this no matter what. stressful day today. I didn't want to have a conversation with him this afternoon. I didn't want to pull him out in front of the men. You know, nothing's personal. I don't take anything personal. I just have to put someone in their place. If we're going to see this out and take each day as it comes, we can do this.
after three days in the doldrums. You smile, Wish, you smile. Ant's patience is rewarded as the wind returns. All smiles around. That's what I like to see. But that's not the only reason to celebrate. Happy boy day! Whoa. Look at that bad boy. Yeah. Here you go, birthday boy. The crew have been hiding a surprise birthday present for their captain. Sounds like a good one. Yes. I'm really happy that we're in this position. Uh, the winds are behind us on my birthday, so I couldn't have asked for a better birthday present apart from being with my wife and children, of course. But I sounded too emotional because I don't do emotions. Oh, mate, that looks a goodie. The wind's blown away in the bad atmosphere, and uh, we will get to Timor, and it will be a united band of brothers. <laughs> really? I don't think that I'd, I'd have heard the sound of the waves crashing against the bow there again. It feels nice to hear it. It's been 11 days since the men left Albany. In total, they've travelled 3,700 miles and are now just 300 miles from their final destination. Then the wind drops again. Has anyone peed yeah. today? No, I tried going just then, but I didn't think I had enough in the tap. Heat exhaustion and lack of water are starting to take their toll. In 1789, Bly battled wind and rain, but he knew the sun posed a greater threat. I consider the cloudy and wet weather to be a blessing. Hot weather would have caused us to die with thirst. Perhaps being so constantly covered with rain protected us from that dreadful calamity. Freddy is suffering with the reduced water rations, and Dr. Luke is concerned. When did you last pee? About this time last night. You haven't peed for 24 hours? No. That's not good. It's not enough. Well, to be honest, I don't think there's anything we can do about that, Luke. I would say you definitely need to be peeing at least once a day. And that's... That is already not enough. Yeah. Giving you out. Just get out. Just stay up. Luke has limited medical equipment. All he can do is take Freddy's pulse. Do you have a very low pulse? What is it? 30. Luke is so worried by Freddy's low heart rate that he decides he must use the emergency radio. See Savannah, see Savannah, who's bound his end. He calls the safety boat two miles away. Hello, Luke. I'm really sorry to have to wait for you. Um, I just wanted to let you know about Fred. He told me he didn't feel fantastic. Um, it turns out he hasn't peed all day. He has a dry mouth. His eyes are slightly sunken. His pulse was 30. His normal resting heart rate is not 30, it's 60. The heart rate is just horrendous, really. Even for someone so young as he is, the heart rate shouldn't be that. Yeah, um, 
If you could definitely give him some more water, um, we'll review in the morning and we'll um, see what course we'll take from there. If Freddy's dehydration gets any worse, he will have to be evacuated. Don't worry. Sleep. Yeah. We'll just see how he is in the morning. was so low that if he was in England, I would probably put him on a monitor. Whereas here, you just sort of go, here's some muddy fart water, go to bed, see you in the morning. It's pretty, it's always pretty scary. From the emergency support boat, Medic AD heads to the bounty's end to assess Freddy's condition. Yeah. Permission to come aboard? Yes. So yesterday, he wasn't going to set himself at all. His, um, mood was down, he's a bit irritable, his memory was definitely affected. Sorry to talk about you like you're not here. No, no, you, you, look, you look pale today as well. You all look pale. Have to map. Stick your tongue out. Stick to the side. Okay. So how much do you drink in a day? Between five and six. Ladies. Ladies. Do you feel dizzy, faint, anything like that? Uh, only when I stand up. Only when you stand up? Yeah. Um, does everybody feel dizzy and things when they stand up? OK. Adi now has serious concerns about the entire crew. He takes away urine samples for analysis. Cheers, guys. Thanks, boys. Cheers. I feel like shit. Feel that shit? Yeah. Feel that shit right now? Mm. Um. What? What? How do you feel that shit? Yeah, What's yeah. the? Probably best not to feel that. Well, just about keep. They'll just take me off. You what? No, no, no. They'll just take me off. They'll take you off. Yeah. He's like dehydrated. Everyone is dehydrated. Results confirm their worst fears. Emergency orders are issued to the crew. You must drink. Water is now not to be rationed. You must drink. You are all horrendously dehydrated. 
potentials can be catastrophic. You're so vulnerable right now that you need to start drinking. For the past 54 days, the crew have been self-sufficient, finding their own drinking water along the way. And it's a proper different ball game now. Yeah? Um, yeah. It's a case that you have to drink now, and it has to be a free-for-all. They are still 300 miles from land, so the medical team are insisting they accept fresh water from the safety boat. You can't, you can't survive. You cannot survive on three ladles. If we were all clearly, openly guzzling four litres of water every day from Evian bottles, this whole trip would be a debacle. If somebody says to me at the end, did you do it? I don't want to be like, yeah, except for the last 100 and, you know, 300 miles where we, uh, for health reasons, we all started drinking four litres of water a day. I mean, I'm not, and this probably sounds like bravado, but fuck that. Fuck that. I appreciate it. I do get it. I really do get it. But it's health. It really is mine. But I also like to think I know my own body reasonably well. You know, if I don't piss for a day, I know that's really bad. If I piss and it looks like Guinness, I know that's really bad. Um, I'm pissing twice a day at the minute. Looks like Mountain Dew, but it's OK. The only problem is now you get to that point where you're dehydrated and you don't think you need to drink yeah. when you do. We're not in the danger zone, are you we? You are. The potential for heat exhaustion leading to heat stroke, which will be catastrophic, uh, seizures, uh, brain injury from your brain swelling, your kidneys will be fucked, your livers will be fucked. Luke will tell you, you need to drink. The person on this voyage, on this project, wants to not have an intervention. But the, there's the doctor side of me, which agrees we should be having four litres of water a day. I, I want to drink only out of that barrel till that barrel's gone. Well, one way of um, getting around it is that um, we agree to take the water on board, we put it under the floorboards, and then everyone on board knows exactly where it is, and we have water. It's a great idea, Luke. Yeah, but we use what's left in the barrel first. Therefore, if anyone goes down, it's because they're choosing not to take it. Yeah. Yes. So yes. that's their personal responsibility. Yeah. Please drink. Yeah? Please. It's very real. It's very real, man. I'm pleading with you, really. Please drink. Adios. at all for any reason. I want to be there at the end. I don't want to have to not finish this with you guys just because I'm too stubborn to drink water. I mean, I'd absolutely hate that to happen. A lot has happened in the last few days. All I can say is we better make it to team more. My concern is that I don't want to damage my liver or kill myself. I've got two kids that I'm absolutely, you know, all, that's all I'm thinking about now. I really don't want to risk these guys' health for this voyage, you know, long-term risk issues, long-term health issues that could be caused by CS dehydration. I have a duty of care to get these guys back in one piece. Good morning, gents. Overnight, the captain has made a decision. Um, right, let me start with the water. As of today, we will be breaking into our emergency water. Don't feel that we've cheated or anything, we haven't. This water is 
if we don't drink it, we're, we're going to die, basically, you know. We're on the verge of serious, serious, serious health issues. There's no limit to water. Right, who wants to do the honours with the water? Bishta, being the QM? Yeah, I think so. Go on, guys, dig in. The water will keep the men alive, but they are still only consuming 400 calories a day. <laughs> My uh, waist size has dropped by about five oh, inches. Oh. Shit! Oh. Holy shit. Wow. That's both fascinating and repulsive at the same time. In their weakened state, thoughts of home are all that's keeping them going. I'm looking forward to getting the crew on land and to uh, getting us all home, really. Uh, we're so close, but yet so far. The ocean current has now carried them to within 160 miles of Timor. But at this rate, it will take another week. Think about the first thing I'm gonna look forward to when I go home. And uh, I used to see my family again. pregnant. I've been at all my child's births and I would love to be at this child's birth. It's very important for me that I get back. The crew of the Bounty's End have now been at sea for 59 days. I think I can see land over there. But it may be my eyes, because it's just one... One big lump. One big rock. Yeah. You see that? Is that another bump over there? I think you may be right. I think you've got it. I think you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> I was beginning to doubt that Timor was actually a place. At three in the morning, we discovered Timor. It is not possible for me to describe the pleasure which the sight of land diffused among us. I now conceived hopes that our voyage was nearly at an end. minutes of rowing max. The dolphins have come, guys. Sailors' souls, that's what they say. Dolphins are the souls 
of dead sailors. They protected us and guided us every inch of the way. On the 14th of June, 1789, William Bly and his men made landfall at Timor. And the world learned for the first time of the mutiny on the bounty. A story that would pass into legend. Bly returned to England and went on to become an admiral. History miscast him as a harsh villain. But for the men on that small boat, he was a hero. Look at what Bly accomplished as a leader. Come on, lads. Nearly there. Fuck you now. We're nearly there. And that's why it's lasted throughout the times, because it is such an amazing feat. Almost there. So close, guys. You've earned every single moment of this. No one can ever, ever take any of this from you. Sixty days in a 23-foot open rowing boat. I don't think I'll ever do anything as tough as that. Boys, we are going through the Great Barrier Reef as we speak. Oh, fucking get in there. It's a lifelong dream. I've got to go places that I'd no right to go. Vanuatu is one of the most magical places I've ever been. <laughs> the emotions are starting to get to me now. Thinking about what we've been through to get here. Being on these rocks, doing exactly the same thing as Lion is pretty special. Just, I feel, I feel like a part of history. It's definitely a day I'll never ever forget. Who does this? in the middle of the South Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Love you guys. Take guys. it easy, man. To the mutiny crew. Yeah. yeah. Gentlemen, it's been an honour and a privilege. Thank you so much. And I don't think anyone said this yet, but on behalf of the crew, it's been an absolute honour. And you've been absolutely unbelievable this trip. And uh, we fucking love you, mate. We absolutely love you. I love so each and you. every one of you, and you don't need to thank me. Without you, I couldn't have done this, guys. Last 10 metres. Let's row it in. Let's go. Come on. Let's do this. Come on. It's right there. Keep going, guys. Fred, yeah. you got this. It's okay, it's okay, guys. All's in, all's in. Feels good to be on land. You've earned that, my friend. Comrade. All right, I'm man. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Very good, mate. Oh. oh my god. Yes! Get in! Damn. Welcome ashore. We did it. We did it. Oh yeah. Fucking love you boys. Oh, oh. Thank well you done, so much. <laughs> Thank you. I can't believe it. I haven't hugged you yet. Just to think about, you know, how did Bly get through this? You know, how did he cope? You know, how am I going to cope? <sighs> you always have your doubts. You're always scared of failure. You know, you're always scared to, once you've earned the respect of the men, to, you know, that you're going to lose it within a moment. And I didn't want them to think that there was ever a problem or that I was ever in a situation where I was unsure of my decisions, which I was most of the time. <laughs> oh, man. 
Come in, guys. Come in. I couldn't imagine my life without the minute. It's going to be a really, really difficult when I go home to my, my original family, if you will, and then realise that they're not going to be there when I wake up, they're not going to be there when I want to chat to them. Hey, they're not going to be there when I go to the toilet. You don't have too many moments like this in your life, do you? I'd all grab a pebble from this beach if I were you. We can quite comfortably say that we have got that metal and steel in us as a group of men because I don't think we would have ever given up. I cannot believe we've been in that thing for 60 days. Look how small she looks. She's absolutely tiny. Bloody boat. <laughs> <laughs>